hello everyone welcome back to my youtube channel once again with the new video today we will discuss about the hvc design for clean room facilities uh, so first of all we will discuss what is clean rooms clean rooms is uh, defined by an iso 146441 as a room in which the concentration of air airborne particle is controlled and which is constructed and used in manner to minimize the introduction generation and retention of particles inside the room and with other relevant parameters temperature humidity pressure blah blah so what is clean room like it uh, it's clear from its name in which uh, clean room are the room in which airborne particles are controlled its concentration are controlled airborne particles are of different sizes it will be from 0.3 micron up to maximum so we just need to control these airborne particles to enter the clean room and uh, second one is the temperature humidity and pressure these are the concern uh, parameters of a clean room so it's uh, it's one of the clean room model uh, here you can see uh, two uh, spaces one is quality assurance slab and one is a septic area these are some ducting supply duct and exhaust ducts so what it means like the class 10,000 and class this is also class 10,000 we will discuss it later what is uh, class 10,000 watch the video till end so you join you just uh, don't want to miss these uh, guidelines uh, so these are the ISO classes class 10,000 class 1000 and different so we will discuss it later here the positive sign show that these areas are on positive pressure these uh, guidelines are provided by the ASHRAE and other governing bodies so you can check its parameters you just analyze your clean room what type of clean room is like your clean room fall in category of ISO class 10,000 so what are its parameter it's uh, in ASHRAE table so uh, like uh, you want to make it negative pressure or you may want to make it more positive pressure so it depends on it i will uh, discuss it later so here it means that the air will flow from this room toward outside no air will flow in this area so the airborne particles will not travel from the other areas to this area and also for this but it depends upon which area is most concerned like this is the triple positive and this is double positive it means the air can flow from this area to this area but the air cannot flow from this area to this area why like you know the air is the airborne particle carry carrier it carries the airborne particles so we just don't need airborne particles here so this is one of the example of clean room and after this we will discuss clean room classification clean room classification uh, depends upon on the particular matter such as dust and uh, other uh, particle sizes like we classify the clean rooms on the basis of uh, particle size its diameter what diameter uh, of particle uh, we are going to uh, deal with it like uh, in lab in pharmacies different type of pharmaceutical uh, companies uh, pharmaceutical areas where the medicines are prepared where the laboratories so they uh, they have different particle sizes so you have to first analyze what's your particle size what kind of work you are doing in this area what kind of laboratory it is and uh, then you just uh, check it in the uh, iso class which is i will discuss uh, at the end of the video uh, so for non-particular con contaminants maximum allowable density in term of microbes per cubic meter or molecules per cubic meter is specified like we classify the rooms on the basis of these allowable densities in term of microbes per cubic meter for non-particular contaminants and to determine how clean an area is depend on the class number that is to design like According to federal standard 209A to D versions, 
class number refer to maximum number of particles of 0.5 micron size or bigger that would be allowed in one cubic feet of plane room like we classify that for example you, we have 0.5 micron size of airborne particle <coughs> how much 0.5 airborne particles 0.5 micron airborne particles can be accommodate in one cubic feet of clean room air so this is the basic uh, classification of clean room these are some clean room that is class 1 class 10 you have to first uh, analyze like I discussed in previous slide so you have to first analyze what kind of clean room you are dealing with like laboratory like pharmaceutical companies and for example like your lab your clean room is fall in class 1 so there will be 0 0.2 micrometer size of 35 is allowable mean in in your room airborne particles of diameter 0 0.5 micrometer and its quantity should be 35 not more than 35 particles of 0 0.1 micrometer is allowed in class 1 clean room and also same for the other particles like 0 0.2 micrometer 7 particles is allowed and for 0 0.3 3 particles are allowed and 0 0.5 1 particle is allowed so only one particle in class 1 uh, clean room is allowed of 0 0.5 micrometer and also same for the class 10 350 75 and so on so these are the classification of clean rooms uh, a class 100 clean room for example would not contain more than 100 particles bigger than 0 0.5 micron in a cubic foot of air like I discussed in previous slide that is the class 100 there should be not more than 100 particles of 0 0.5 micrometer in one cubic feet of air so these are the allowable uh, particle range like you have the class 100 class uh, clean room so if you have 0 0.5 micron of 100 particles in one cubic foot of air then it's okay if it's not then you must clean your area you must clean your room with filtration we will discuss later what kind of filtration we will need for this and same for different classes class 1 to 10 where you, we use class 1 to 10 and uh, it's uh, like these are the classes and uh, their typical uses from class 1 and 10 we use these clean rooms for production laboratories for electronic integrated circuits like uh, you are working on integrated circuits where electronic integrated circuits are to use so this clean room will fall in class 1 and class 10 clean room and for class 100 this this class is fall in a production area for photo labs medical implants like you are dealing with medical implants photo labs so you are iso class you are uh, clean room class will be class 100 and class 10,000 production locals for TV tubes hospital operating theater and class this one is for production of ball bearings like you are producing ball bearings so you don't need airborne particles to track inside the ball bearings uh, so we we don't need any friction in a ball bearing so these are the some uh, classes and uh, typical uses and you can analyze from this table how much micron you are required and you can analyze from this which area is your area which space is your space and which you are producing something these are the ISO classification of clean room I, what is ISO classification of clean room ISO define maximum concentration limit per cubic meter of air like in class ISO class 1 0 0.5 micron 
the particle should not be bigger than 0.5 micron of 10 particles per cubic meter of air so in I so same for the ISO class 2 that is uh, 100 particles that its size should not be bigger than 0.1 micrometer in one cubic of meter is allowed like your air has has only 100 cubic 100 particles per cubic meter of air that is not bigger than 0.1 micrometer then it's okay so it will fall in ISO class 2 and there's also for class 3 4 5 and ISO class 9 these are the some ISO classes from 1 to 9 uh, you can just check your area in which class your area is fall like if it fall in ISO class 1 that it should be this one and this one and so on HVC system or for clean room now we will discuss about the clean room HVC system how to design what are the guidelines so as earliest earlier I have discussed that three major concern parameters are temperature humidity and pressure so we have discussed in the next slides typical clean room would typically require 20 to 60 air changes so when you are going to design the supply air return air and that is the a ventilation system for your clean room so you need 20 to 60 air changes depending upon on your area this is a typical one and could be higher as 600 for absolute cleanness what is air changes air changes that how many how much time your air change in one hour you can uh, calculate your air flow requirements by following a formula that is air flow rate is, is equal to air changes like uh, it may be 20 to 60 or up to 600 depend depending upon your ISO uh, clean room class that uh, I will discuss here uh, and multiply by the volume of space like the length width and height of the space and divided by 60 uh, you will get the required air flow rate for your uh, clean room like uh, this one is the ISO class one first of all you just recognize what kind of your laboratory you just select your ISO class that for example it fall in ISO class 1 so you just uh, check your uh, ISO class 1 that how much uh, micron you can uh, how much uh, micron are allowed how much particles are allowed of different microns and then you just go here and select uh, the air changes for uh, your class uh, ISO class like uh, for ISO class 1 we just need 7 to 130 feet per minute of velocity and greater than 750 air changes like you have to put 750 multiplied by volume divided by 60 you will get the result for your required clean room required CFM and required airflow uh, so these are the uh, different air changes for different room like in class uh, 10 you have <coughs> to choose 500 to 600 uh, air changes per hour and for class 100 it's 150 to 400 I will share this slide with you you can study it uh, this is the supply air distribution we have different requirements in different clean rooms sometimes we need unidirectional flow sometimes we need turbulent turbulent is no non unidirectional flow uh, so this is the ahu this will provide uh, uh, air through filtration uh, to the clean room filter air and then recirculate it back to the ahu through filters and i will discuss what kind of filter you will use for your clean rooms in next uh, slides so these are some requirements where you will need turbulent and you will need your and where you will need unidirectional I will discuss it later airflow pattern airflow pattern have evolved into three major types like I have discussed three major type of airflow we need uh, in our clean rooms 
that is unidirectional flow non unidirectional flow unidirectional flow is a laminar flow in which all the uh, lines of uh, flow are parallel to each other and unidirectional flow in which all lines are not parallel to each other and mixed flow in which some of lines are parallel and some of lines are not parallel to each other that is mixed flow uh, like uh, you have analyzed uh, your class a clean room class like one so it need unidirectional flow you have just uh, provide the laminar flow in this area same for 10 and 100 but in 1000 class you just need non unidirectional flow and you 10000 non directional same for this one so just analyze your area and get what you want like you can see this is the unidirectional flow these uh, in which the uh, lines are parallel to each other so this is the laminar flow on unidirectional flow and you can see this is non unidirectional flow in which all lines are not parallel to each other that is going somewhere and this is the mixed flow in which you can see some lines are parallel to each other and some lines are not parallel to each other like these lines and these are parallel so this is mixed flow and what kind of filtration you need for your uh, clean room we need high efficiency particulate air that is HEPA HEPA filters having filtration efficiency of 99.7% down to 0.3 microns mean the uh, diameter of airborne particles which is 0.3 micron and above can be filtered that is 99.9 percent .9 is filtered through HEPA filter so you, we use this these kind of filters in our clean rooms at the supply terminals at the uh, diffusers so the uh, clean room just flow to the uh, clean air just flow to the clean rooms the HEPA filters for stringent Clean rooms are normally located at the terminal end and in most cases provide 100% ceiling coverage. Like uh, you just install a HEPA filters in your uh, diffusers so it will provide a filtered air and uh, most of the area should be covered 100% covered with the diffuser but it's not necessary. Uh, now we'll discuss what is HEPA filters. HEPA filters stand for high efficiency particulate air and HEPA filters work on diffusion principle to remove particulate matter and are extremely <coughs> important for maintaining contamination control. These filter particles as small as 0.3 microns like, like I have discussed it can uh, it can trap it can filter 0.3 micron diameter of particle up to 99.9 percent .9%, but below this it will not uh, uh, capture or it will not filter uh, less than 0.3 micrometer particles at this efficiency like I said the diffuser should cover the almost 100% area of the uh, clean room it's not uh, the 100% but almost of the area is covered like so the air pattern is good for clean room like this one this one this one these are all diffusers this provide flow to this area this will this area so the whole area will be covered with air flow so no uh, area should be uh, trapped with uh, some air no, uh, non-air pockets uh, so third uh, so f uh, first one I will discuss what is room pressurization like I've discussed these three parameters temperature uh, humidity and room pressure so for clean room pressurization is very important you just uh, need to positively pressurize your room with 0.05 inch water column uh, that is equivalent to some uh, Pascal uh, with respect to the adjacent area like I was uh, discussed in previous slides so you have just to pressurize your area with respect to the adjacent area like uh, 
if you have a 0 0.05 inch water column in your clean room uh, uh, the pressure in your clean room is 0 0.05 inch water gauge so the pressure in other area should be less this uh, this is done by uh, supplying more air and extracting less air from the room than it's supplied how to pressurize the room just supply the uh, air according to the ACH like I've discussed uh, and extract less air 10 to 15% uh, depending upon your pressure how much pressure you want to build up that is uh, if you want to 0 0.05 inch of column pressure you just control your volume control dampers at the return uh, duct to uh, supply more air and extract le uh, less air to pressurize your room so your room must be pressurized so the air particle should not travel inside the clean room it must be travel out of the room so your room should be clean for your production this is one of the pressurization example these two are positively pressurized one is uh, single positive and these are double positive in this you can see the air is flow from this area to this area and then outside so this area is cleaned and no airborne particle is traveled from this area to this double positive area pressure so and this one the airborne particles are traveled from this area to this area and this area to this area but no airborne particle should travel from this area to this area and from zero to this area so both are clean with respect to this area so 0 0.05 inch water gauge pressure should be in clean room and the other adjacent will be on less pressure so the air will flow from the clean room toward the other areas to make it clean uh, and second one is the temperature recommendation what temperature you will need uh, for your clean room for clean room the temperature set point for comfort is usually 68 Fahrenheit or less depending on the required level of going for the personal working in process relative humidity that is RH it should be 45 to 50 percent uh, in your clean room so you have to maintain the this uh, temperature or less and depending upon your product like uh, you are producing some products that want some uh, good temperatures so you need these temperature but in uh, generally normally we use 68 Fahrenheit or less but in special special application you you, you uh, will maintain that temperature which will suitable for your product and humidity, humidity will be 45 to 50 percent in normal uh, clean rooms but at specific you will just provide the uh, as, uh, as desired RH uh, depending upon your product what kind of product you are producing uh, this is the last slide I think so we just need two type of uh, air handling unit for pressurization of room for more pressurization one is makeup air handling unit that provide air to the recirculation air handler the recirculation just recirculate the air and provide cooling the makeup air handler pressurize and provide more air more CFM to the air uh, to the room to pressurize it so this is the class 10,000 and class 100 rooms both have return uh, ducts and supplier ducts so these terminals are with uh, HEPA uh, here he is installing HEPA in uh, main line to filter these areas you can also uh, install HEPA filter in these four uh, damper uh, terminals for uh, diffusers and uh, you can install more filters in a section of uh, uh, AHU that is MERV 7, MERV 14 and MERV 13 depending upon on your uh, lab. How we will uh, recognize what kind of uh, filter we need. So you just need uh, ASHRAE uh, 170 
uh, that is code 170 code for this like uh, you can see uh, just uh, zoom it uh, the laboratory work area bacter uh, bacteriology and laboratory work area bi biochemistry uh, so these area should be on negative pressure and uh, their minimum outdoor ACH should be 2 and minimum total ACH should be 6 and all room air directly exhaust to outdoor mean no air should be inside the room all air should be exhausted no air, no air should be uh, returned to the AHU and uh, the air circulation by means of room not required no uh, circulation and desired relative humidity percent not required you can set any of percentage and temperature range are these you can just select these parameter from these tables and use use any your calculation thank you very much for watching my video